What's going on everyone? It's March 20th. It's Friday, the end of an incredibly crazy week in the stock and mortgage bond markets. Um, if you're looking for today's mortgage rate update, uh, it's right here. Click on that. This is another video that I think is really important because another concern that a lot of people have is what's going on with my money in the markets or what should I do with a potential recession coming? What do I do given the current situation? I really, really, really want to buy a house. Um, it seems like a great time and an opportunity to buy a house with everything that's going on. Um, but I'm nervous, right? Either here's the three things I've heard. Um, I've lost a lot of my down payment in the market, right? That 60% of my money went away overnight because of everything that's happened in the stock market. And so I just don't have as much to put down and I want that to recover. Uh, the other thing I've heard is I have all this money in cash that I was going to use for down payment, but with what's going on in the stock market, man, when this thing turns, it's going to turn fast and I can make a bunch of money there. So maybe I shouldn't put as much down because I want to be able to invest it. And then the third thing is, I don't know what the heck's going on here. I need to have cash be cash just in case I need a uh, peace of mind, basically. So I want to show you a way that you can still buy a home and put less money down. I'm calling it the recession proof mortgage. I don't know if it's actually recession proof, but it's, I think this is a really good concept going into a recession, right? Because all through all of those things are valid. I lost money in the stock market that I need to recover. I want to invest in the stock market because I want to make more money when it does recover or I'm conservative. I want cash to be cash just in case three valid, very valid points. None of those mean you should not buy a house. So let me show you how you can buy a house. And we're going to compare two different things. We're going to look at the traditional 20% down compared to what I'm calling the recession proof mortgage. Really all we're doing is we're having your money multitask. You're making money in two places instead of one. And I'm going to show you how it works. And um, we'll go from there. Now, remember, uh, I am not a financial advisor. Everyone's mortgage situation will be different. Interest rates are credit score dependent. There's a lot of things that build in. So this is supposed to be like a conceptual concept that you can apply to your life if you want to. So I'm gonna jump into the data. I'm gonna show you a tool I use to present ideas to my clients and um, comment below. I wanna know what you guys think of this. Do you think I'm right? Do you think I'm wrong? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Let's build a conversation about this because I don't want people to be paralyzed by fear. So let's look at how we can make our money multitask. Let's jump in. Okay, so this is a tool I use for all of my clients. What we're looking at here is the same old, same old 20% down option. And then what I have right over here is what I'm calling the recession-proof mortgage plan. So what are the difference between these two? To start off, purchase price is the same either way, $700,000 purchase price. But you'll notice with this recession-proof one, I have a mortgage of 665 and uh, with 20% down, I have a loan amount of 560. We're just putting less money down. I kind of already said that, but that's why, that's why we have more money to work with. So when I jump back over and look at this, uh, cash to close, total money needed for this specific scenario would be $155,457 with 20% down. Um, with this scenario, we're only putting down total cash to close 51,000. So that leaves me $100,000 to accomplish one of my three things, either to leave 100,000 in the market to recover, 100,000 to invest in the market to make more money, or 100,000 in my ch checking or savings account so I have peace of mind. We have $100,000 and we still own a house. But Sean, the monthly payment's so much higher, right? The payment on your on your mortgage plan idea here is 45.54 and if I put 20 percent down, it's only $38.99. So it's way more expensive. Of course, it's going to be more expensive per month because you're borrowing more money and there is mortgage insurance here. And I just said that horrible word. No one wants to hear mortgage insurance. But remember, with conventional financing, mortgage insurance is removable. As soon as you have 20% equity, you can remove your mortgage insurance. A couple ways to do that. Every time you make your monthly payment, you're paying down your mortgage. That's adding equity to your home. What we're having happen at the same time is you're properties appreciating in value, giving you more equity, getting you to that 20% position. Those two things work together. You get there faster. Now, let's just say that things calm down in a couple months and you're like, wow, I don't need my cushion anymore. I made a bunch of money in the stock market. All of my money recovered. I'm going to just, I'm just going to pay down some principal on my mortgage. You can make a substantial principal reduction, put it down on your mortgage, right? Put the down payment you were going to make anyways, remove the mortgage insurance. You just call the mortgage insurance company. Hey, I have 20% equity. I want this to go away. They'll do an appraisal. They'll do an automated evaluation of the value of the home and they'll get rid of your mortgage insurance. It really is that simple to get rid of. So mortgage insurance is not a bad thing. It's a means to an end. 
It's a way to help you buy a home. Think of it that way. So yes, the payment is $600 more, but remember you have $100,000 sitting in an account. So what you could do is use that 100,000 to offset that payment. If it was an extra $1,000 a month, you'd be able to make that payment for 1,000 months. So you always have that cushion there for you if that was a concern to you. Now, let's look at the bigger picture here. If I come down here and look at my net worth in 20 years, I'm using 3% uh, appreciation in this example, which is pretty modest. My property that I purchased for 700,000 will now be worth a million dollars in 20 years. But if I put less money down and had money working for me in the market, now I have $1.35 million. I made an extra $350,000 in 20 years. How did that happen? Well, let's take a peek, let's look. So if I click this more info button over here, we're gonna have a reinvestment strategy we can look at. And what I did is I took that $100,000 difference and I put it in the market. And I put it in the market at a rate of 7%. Now I know a lot of you gonna say, where's the 7% come from? This is my source, okay? This is a great book. Even if you're not a Tony Robbins fan, like you're not into the raw, raw part of it, this is a really good book. I think everyone should take a peek at. But here's, here's why I'm using 7%. On page 43, it states from 1996 through 2015, the S&P 500 returned an average of 8.2% a year. 8.2% per year on average for like 20 years. So that's why I'm using that. All right, and I'm being conservative. I'm only using 7%, not 8.2. So by using that, my investment of 100,000 over 20 years becomes $403,000. I turned a little money, I quadrupled on that. I have my property growing in equity at the same time. My money is multitasking. Appreciation is happening at 3% a year in the property, which again is conservative. Don't forget about inflation. Inflation is the biggest driver of appreciation over time. So I have my appreciation happening over here. I have the market working for me over here. That gets me an extra 350 grand over putting 20% down. Now, again, this is not for everyone, but I want everyone to understand the options that are available to you when you're financing a home. 20% down is not always the right answer. Your lifestyle is what matters. Your confidence is what matters. That's why I like to use my little tagline of home loans for your lifestyle. I want you to be confident. If you need $100,000 in the bank, to f make you feel cozy, you need that like kind of security blanket, which we should all have, right? Nobody wants to live paycheck to paycheck. So don't put as much money down, still get the house, right? Stop renting, get the house, but leave that hundred there to work for you. If your hundred grand went away because of the stock market, we all know it's going to recover. So let's get it back. Or if you have a hundred that you can now throw into the market, great. I want you guys to have those options. I want you to understand how this works. Now there's plenty of ways to work this in between here. You can do 10% down, you can do 15% down. There's a lot of different ways to work it. And that's why I love using this tool because it enables me to customize it for you and show you, basically I can illustrate anything you wanna see. So I hope this has been helpful. Um, again, I wanna have a conversation around this. Whether you think I'm right, whether you think I'm wrong, whether you love or hate this idea, leave comments here because everyone will learn from each other. This is a great place for us to all kind of have a collective conversation and see what we think. So I hope this is helpful. Um, if you're at home shopping this weekend, it's obviously gonna be online. There's gonna be a lot of great properties. Keep an eye on social media and uh, look out for a lot of uh, real estate videos. That's really gonna be the best way to do virtual tours right now because you're not gonna be walking into any open houses this weekend. So we're all gonna get through this together, but there's don't panic. Again, I don't want anyone to panic. There's a lot of different ways to slice this. I want you to be well-educated. I want you to make smart decisions. And I want you to do that on a nat on analysis, not on personal or professional opinion. I will always give you my professional opinion, but I'd rather show you what it's based on. Thank you guys so much. Have a good weekend. Stay safe. Stay home. The sooner we all stay home, the sooner this goes away. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.